sacrifice. Amen. I have a bunch of cookie cutters up here. I know it's far away and can't see what they are exactly. Christmas tree, a dog, a gingerbread man, and a penguin. I have no idea. <laughs> a, a penguin? Okay. Uh, so cookie cutters, I mean, can you imagine making Christmas cookies with a knife and or with a fork only. I mean, if I tried to make a reindeer or St. Nicholas, uh, it, you know, they would end up uh, looking like monsters or uh, uh, the reindeer would be an elephant or something like that. I, you know, these cookie cutters, I mean, uh, and, and they, you know, they're, they're useful. Not all the cookies look the same. And this is not a cookie cutter sermon. It never is, okay? Uh, but it's a model, all right? It's a model, very useful. And you can make, you can make your, you know, in the dough, and then after that, you can do different things with it. For example, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, the Lord's Prayer is a model prayer. It's disrespectful to call the Lord's Prayer a cookie cutter prayer, it's not. But it is a form, it is a model, okay? A holy model by Jesus given to us. But it, but it can be changed. So what my kids will do is they'll take the gingerbread man and, you know, make them, and then they'll take dough, and, they'll, and after the, the, the dough has been shaped, they'll add on like five inches at the gut, and then with frosting, write dad on it. <laughs> so, what I do is I get even with them. So I take the dog, the golden retriever they love, and I bite the heads off of them, <laughs> and then pretend to put them back. Or I'll take St. Nicholas. Oh, this is beautiful cookie. Right, that just bite their head right off. And the kid's kind of, you know, horrified by that thought. Well, every model needs a head. Every cookie cutter uh, like this needs a head. And so that's why Jesus said, uh, here's how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The, the, this is the God is is the head uh, in his uh, humanity. Uh, Jesus admitted to being less to his Father, equal <laughs> to the Father's to his deity. But he wasn't afraid uh, to pray to someone greater than he, and he is the Holy and Eternal Son of God, and we shouldn't be afraid either. And he calls God our Father, our dear Father, which means we're part of God's family. We are his dear children. And I love the fact that when the one disciple said, Lord, teach us to pray, uh, Jesus responds, well, when you pray, say, my Father who art in heaven. No, he didn't say that, did he? Our Father. What's he talking about here? We Christians are supposed to pray together as a communion of saints. We're supposed to pray together with our family members. We're supposed to pray together and gather to pray as a congregation in a house devoted to prayer. Our Father. Not their Father. My Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, you are part of the communion of saints, children, family members of God. Now, now, of course, you can pray by yourself, but the Lord's Prayer is not a selfish prayer. It also has other people in mind, which is why we pray, Our Father, 
who art in heaven. No Christian is an island that's right out, that's wrong. People think you can be a Christian and be an island and keep religion and God to yourself and stay away from the brothers and sisters. That's wrong. Or he wouldn't have taught us to pray this way. In the plural. Who art in heaven, now we can't see the Father now, but we do see the Son in his word and in his sacraments. We hear the Father speaking through his Son in all the scripture. Jesus said, the scriptures were written concerning me. He also said, I and the Father are one. So the more closer you are, close you are to Jesus, the closer you are to God the Father, which are in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Jesus described fatherhood as is really like, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if, at, or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You know, Jesus can get away with saying that we are evil. And yet we can still do good things because he's, he's the only human righteous from first to last. Yes, he shares with us his righteousness, but if we, if we, can, if we mortals can give our, our kids something good for them instead of a snake and scorpion, how much more will God the Father, who created you and loves you, gave you his son, give you what's good for you? Not always what you want, but what's good for you, with what you need. So let's not pray for snakes and for scorpions to attack other people or other nations or other groups of peoples. Send them snakes and scorpions, O oh God. Rather, let's be like Father Abraham and plead for the Christians who were in Sodom. Plead that God would spare the Christians from destruction that's all around them. Let's pray for, what does he say here, eggs? fish. Next, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means to be kept holy. Halloween is All Hallows Eve. October 31st, All Saints Day Eve. So hallowed be thy name, saintly kept holy. Now God's name has always been, is, and will always be holy, but we pray in this petition that his name would be kept holy among us. And how do we do that? Well, with proper worship, with proper and sound doctrine and teaching and preaching and listening, and with godly living. That's how God's name, his reputation, is kept holy among us and in our community. It's a hard, hard prayer, is it not? Hallowed be thy name. But God will send us the Spirit to do this, to practice our faith. Now, one rub I have, not with this petition, but with people who don't use it right is when people say, God is good. You know, 
I know that already. You're not, though. You, you, you come, to, someone's going to have a problem, or you have a concern, or there's trouble. God is good. Yeah, I know that. But you're not, you lousy love. You have to become good. You have to become good on the inside. You have to have a quieted heart. You need help. So let me help. Because when you come to people, you know, and, and, and you're concerned, and then they just say, God is good. Okay, this isn't about God right now. It's about you. And that's what this prayer is about. Hallowed be thy name. It's about us being good and the friend who needs help, good. So now you're all going to be afraid to say, God is good. Yes, yes, he is. And it can be said correctly, but usually it's just like a <clears throat> cliche. And I don't want to talk about it. And I don't want to deal with it. And I don't want your help. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now, most Christians think this is a prayer. Thy kingdom come for a future time. A future date. When Jesus will come back from heaven with the angels. And with the trumpets of the angels. It's not what this is wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. This is a today prayer. It's a yesterday prayer and a tomorrow prayer. But it doesn't have to do with the second coming. Thy kingdom come means Jesus, make sure there's a Wells church near where I live so I can have word and sacrament. In a tradition I trust. Make sure there's a church where I can send my kids to Sunday school to. Make sure there's a church where I can worship and pray and support the work of your kingdom near where I live. So please lower the gas prices because I have to drive. That's what this prayer is. Thy kingdom come means I need a church near me where I live. God has been gracious to us. Wherever we live and move, usually we can find a godly Christian parish. And that's because of this prayer. Thy kingdom come. God's kingdom is his word and sacrament and his son. And his churches on the earth. This is an earthly prayer for today. And I don't think we should just ask God for a church near where we live. I think we should ask God and then do something about it. Which is why you're here. To build up your church. And pray this prayer at the same time. I think you didn't know that. Thy kingdom come, do not abandon me, God, to unholy houses of prayer or no Christianity at all. Do not drive Christ out of my community, the state of Illinois, the United States, lest we all perish and are consumed by the devil. That's what it means. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a brief prayer in your eternal existence. Uh, you'll, you won't have to pray it once you are in heaven. There are no barriers to God's will there, but there are plenty here. This is a prayer against the unholy three. So this is a stick em up buddy type of a prayer. Against the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh who fight against God's will and fight against God's church and fight against Christ himself who will forgive them but once they fight against the Holy Spirit 
there is no forgiveness for them. So we pray that God would also send his holy angels to protect us and our kids and our families and our country. Again, it, this is a negative part of the prayer against the unholy three. Devil world and sinful flesh. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is God's good and gracious will for you? To strengthen you in his word, to discipline you in his love, to make you closer to his son, to give you the Christian faith until your dying breath, and to save people everywhere. That's his good and gracious will. The kingdom of God is a team player event. Jesus wants us all involved on the team and to help the team here on earth because of our many foes. That's why he said, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Ask your father for the Holy Spirit and he will give it to you. Ask him to give the Holy Spirit, I would say, to yourself and to me and to your friends and family. Pray for them in body, mind, and spirit. Send them the Holy Spirit, God. Ask and it will be given to you. Your prayers are so vital to the well-being of other people on this earth. And, that, and that's what the, the, these petitions are about. Jesus said, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Like one person can change God's mind, can deliver one or a million can do amazing things. Give us this day our daily bread or our, or our dough. Now, there are seven petitions or requests in the Lord's Prayer. Six of them deal with spiritual matters. One of them deals with earthly stuff, like dough, cash, Food, housing, good weather, government, friends, good, good spouse and neighbors. You know, and all, all the worries that, that we have and, and, and the, the long litany of lists of, of at, talking to God about our problems, and you should. But remember that Jesus is the bread of life, so that, 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 that's where we should start for daily bread. And, and then after that, uh, trust that God will provide for you, knows that you need these things to operate in this country, and he'll give them to you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his holiness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. And yet he wants us to ask. The Bible says, well, God gives, you know, daily bread to both the wicked and righteous alike. Your neighbor has a better house than you do. Or car. the godless clunk. God gives. God blesses. Thanks be to God. God bless you. What this prayer says is, look, I'm acknowledging that God gives me daily bread. My neighbors might not. You know, the birds sing their songs of thanks for the sunrise and the seeds and the insects that God gives them. The brook laughs as it 
as it goes over the stones and the fish jump for joy for the food provided for them that God gives them. The hills are alive with the sound of music. His nature rejoices in how God takes care of it. What do most people do? We eat our steak sandwich, scarf down an ice cream sundae with nary a word of thanks or gratitude. Most people. But not you. That's why you pray this petition. It's, just, it's a thank you. It's a thanksgiving type of a prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, James put it this way today. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Who knew that the forgiveness of sins or Christ crucified for you was the key to all Christian prayer? That's right, the forgiveness of sins. Well, Israel knew they couldn't pray to God unless they sacrificed a dove or a lamb or the shedding of blood of an animal. Israel knew when Jesus cried out, it is finished and the temple curtain in Jerusalem was rent in two from top to bottom and there was an earthquake and the Holy of Holies was exposed to the world, heaven opened to the world through the blood of Christ. The forgiveness of sins makes this possible to pray to God. So yes, the forgiveness of sins. Do not pray with an unforgiving heart. I believe God will reject your prayer and punish you. Do not pray with a heart that doubts or is skeptical or angry or mean. I believe that God will not be praised or pleased. But pray, for, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, about my brother Harry, and then you go on from there. Forgiveness is the key to all prayer. And this model prayer, not, not accepted. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The two go hand in hand because when evil or trouble or pain or worry consume us, we're tempted. We're tempted to, to, to sin, to blame God, to hate others. We are weak. We are just flesh and blood. So we ask God, don't give me so many troubles or evils because I, I just, well, can't take it. But deliver me from evil. So temptation and evil, of course, go hand in hand. And this is a great way to end the prayer. Jesus has triumphed over evil. And God is pleased when we trust that so shall it be among us, Jesus, brothers and sisters. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These will be the last words that you hear or speak here on the earth. They will be the first first words that you hear or speak in heaven. So I guess the last shall be first and the first shall be last. This is how you should pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this model prayer. Amen.
The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the Apostles' Creed is on page 41. I believe in God, the Father Almighty.